All right, 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM listeners, you already know what time it is. It is 8.30 p.m. on the east, 5.30 p.m. on the west, and we have one of the best to ever do it. We got Rocket Loke on the line. How are you doing this evening? Man, what it do, everybody? Man, Sacramento, stand up, man. Hey, man, you know what? From Sacramento all the way to Canada, we worldwide up in this. Man, you already know what time it is. But I have to ask you, Rocket, from the, from the very beginning, man, back when times were very much simpler, but I have to ask you, what made you decide to get into the music industry initially? Man, it go back when I was young, man. I grew up in uh, South Sacramento, 29th Street. My brother uh, was really into rapping, and uh, I looked up to him when I was a kid, but I couldn't do it, you feel me? So it just, it was just, I took my time, and was like an overseer looking at things, man. I was really taking it to the heart, what he was telling me, man. And, uh, you know, a lot of criticism made me want to do a rougher, you feel me? So I started going to hard in the pain about 10 years ago with it. And, man, look at you now, man. I'm going to be honest with you. We here in Canada have been bumping your music, man. I've been loving what you do. So most definitely, that 10 years of work most definitely is showing tonight. Man, it's a beautiful thing. It does pay off, man. I got... Uh, uh, I got wrapped up with a couple good people, man. I got a, uh, I'm signed to a record label right now, Diamond Like Music Group, do Eric Parson. So one of my homies that's uh, resting in peace right now was always trying to hook me up with this man. And uh, we finally met each other, and I've been going hard in the pain ever since I've been with him. And I have to ask you, like, with that record deal, man, what is it like being signed to that record label? Oh, I love it. Like I said, I was doing this about 10 years ago, but I was just doing it to show everybody, like, see, I have to explain to everyone there's a difference between a rapper, an MC, and just someone that's just trying to get their name heard, you know. Most rappers, when you go by that name as a rapper, that means you're living from paycheck to paycheck. If you're not making money, then you're just, you're nothing. You feel me? That is most definitely so, true. Yeah, so so you know, I, I wasn't I wasn't into that division. I was just like a hood rapper. I was just letting everybody know I had a little heat under my chest. But a rapper, an MC, and an artist, those are all different things, and that's what people need to understand. You know that you know, like I said, an artist, he's living for paycheck to paycheck. Without that paycheck, he's not an artist no more. And speaking of an artist, man, I saw a video on your Facebook of you opening up for DJ Quick. I have to ask you. What was that experience like opening up for the legendary DJ Quick? That was a beautiful thing. I got to talk to him at the end of that uh, uh, little performance. We opened up with him. It was actually my cousins. They are called the One Mob out of Chico, California. It's 100 miles away from Sacramento. So they hit me up, and we all went to the concert that day. And at the end, I got to meet DJ Quick and his wife, and he was a very humble dude. Yeah, I heard phenomenal things about DJ Quick, man. I heard he's always, always down to earth individual, man. I heard, I heard nothing but good things. I, I don't think I've heard one one bad thing about DJ Quick from anybody I've ever talked to. Nah, he was a very humble dude. He said, "Hey, man, I don't know who you are, but I like the way you rap." And he said, "Don't give up. Don't no matter who is what you keep going by yourself, and they will hear your name." And that's what I did, and it paid off. And also, the one thing I've noticed that you were featured on the Block to Block music collaboration, uh, True Deed Up. I have to ask you, how did that come to be for you, and what was it like working on that collab? Well, I talk to Block to Block music all the time. We just got done making another uh, cartoon music video, and it dropped last night. So uh, we stay doing collaborations together, but, uh, and man, I love everything that guy does. Everything he does and everything that he collabs together is worth gold. And if you don't mind me asking, where can our listeners after this interview uh, check out that uh, animated video? You can look up Block the Block Music on uh, YouTube, and it is posted up there as well. And it's on iTunes, Deezer, Spotify. It's on every all major digital platforms now. And the one thing I've been excited to, uh, excited to ask you, actually, is because one thing I noticed on your IG is at the beginning of next year, you were actually going to be starring in the new movie called Dark Thoughts. Can you tell us a bit more about that project? And I know you probably can't shed too much light because it's still in production, but what, what can our listeners expect from that movie when it does come out? Well, I, 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 if you've noticed, I've been in a couple movies. I was in a movie out here in Florida. I live in Florida now, and uh, it, I was in a movie called Run the Streets, 
but it had a the thing about movies these days is big time promoters is not gonna uh, really produce uh, games. They don't like gang movies or anything in that quote, but if you're going out of that box, I mean, we had Martin Lawrence, we had Van Damme, we had a lot of people sponsoring us, but they didn't want to go through with it because it was kind of gangs, drugs, and stuff like that. They want to see something bigger than, than that, you know what I mean? Did you get the opportunity to actually meet Martin Lawrence when he was sponsoring, or was that just was he just kind of like on the sideline? <laughs> No, no, I never got to meet the guy, but it was just at the end of the credits, I saw that those were some of the people that were sponsoring our movie, and it was cool, but it didn't go very far. We sold it to YouTube for, I think, 40 grand. I have to say, you know, at least you guys got it out there, though. YouTube, it's a fairly big platform. Yeah, it's a fairly big platform. I mean, you, you got to start somewhere. I always tell everyone, you're not going to start from the top. you got to work your way from the bottom to the top, you know? And I saw a little clip of your new movie, man. I have to say, you are crypt out, bro. I have to say that for a fact. But I saw all the blood, all the uh, red bandanas tied together on fire, and you crypt walking, bro. That is some gangster shit. I know I sound very white just saying that, but that's some gangster shit, bro. Yeah, I know, man. It was, <laughs> I did not want to do that part because everyone thinks that it's because I'm Rocket Low that I hate every blood, and it's not like that, man. I got I got family that are bloods, and I got respect for everyone. As long as they respect me, I ain't going to hate someone just because he's from a neighborhood and he claims a different color from than I do. And when I start hating people is when the disrespect starts coming in, and that's when we start seeing eye to eye where it's not cool at, you know what I mean? Most definitely, man. But uh, uh, that's a good thing, though, that we brought that up, because now the individuals that are listening that do see that movie, they know that that is just a character rather than Rocket Loke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, if you're going to pay me big money to do it, I'm going to do it. Money talks and bullshit walks. You know the deal. Most definitely. So everybody that's listening, remember, movies, they are characters. They are humans, but there's uh, they're individuals portraying the character. So just know, you know what I mean? He ain't burning ban bandanas on a daily basis. No, straight, straight. Like I said, I got, I got eight. Get to keep it one hundred, man. You know, I'm a crip from South Sacramento, 29th Street, Garden Block, Crip Gang. But I got family that's Bloods, and I got family that's North Days. I got a mixture of everything, man. So I, I got respect for everyone, unless they disrespect me. I have no enemies with no one, unless they're trying to hurt me or they're disrespecting me. You know, I love everybody. And I also noticed that you and C Dub released a song entitled Northern. California Killer, uh, Killer Capital, my apologies. I have to say, man, that song is an absolute slapper, and I want to know, man, what's the story behind that song, and how did you get connected with C-Dub? Well, C-Dub is a big-time artist from Sacramento. Uh, he's been going for about 20 years, I think. C-Dub is very talented. Uh, he's, he messes with a couple people from our neighborhood at uh, Garden Block. He's, he does business with a couple of us, and I saw how he did good business so I hit him up one day and this was before I was uh, signed to a record label and I wanted to come out with a CD with him because his mixing and mastering cannot be messed with by nobody almost definitely I agree with you on that man his mix yeah. and mastering is phenomenal yeah, so after I saw that he could really uh, get get down with them buttons, man, I locked it in with them real tough, and uh, we came out with two, uh, I think we came out, what was it, I think it was a two, two EP albums we came out with, Mob Factors and Northern California Killer Capital. Oh, man, and I got to say, another C-Dub question as well that I have for you is I actually noticed that on March 31st of 2020, so not too long ago, you actually released the album Mob Factors with C-Dub. I have to ask you, what's the inspiration behind that album? And of course, uh, where can our listeners buy or stream themselves a copy of that particular record? That record, you guys can stream a copy, like I said, on all major digital platforms. We're on uh, iTunes, Deezer, Spotify, we're on all of it. I'm on YouTube, we're, on, we're everywhere. Everywhere worldwide. And, uh, what made me get inspired by making mob factors is because C-Dub is the king of mob beats. That's just my opinion. Somebody might not think that he is, but he makes mob beats. It's just like real old school gangster beats that nobody can touch. So I was already doing music with him. So I said, you know what, let's just make something that has to do with mob beats. And I came up with mob factors because me and him are two big factors in the rap game. So I just said mob factors and put it out. 
And I have to ask you, is there any um, hard copies available for the old school listeners? I know there's a lot of people tend to ask, so I always tend to throw that uh, throw that question out there. That way you can answer them all at once. Yeah, hard copies are available, but most likely uh, on other CDs that I do, we really don't do that. We want them to go and buy it on Deezer or Spotify or something like that so we can make our money. But if somebody needs a hard pack made or wants some done, all they got to do is get a hold of me and that can be done as soon as possible. And also, back in May, you were actually featured on the album Sacramento Capital Punishment Completion Volume 1. I have to ask you, how did that how did that come to be for you? And of course, what was it like working on that project? Uh, that project was one of the best projects that I ever did, and I have to give it up again for these two people right here that's been like a angel over my shoulder. Uh, C-Dub is one of them. C-Dub produces all the music. He mixes and masters all the music. And uh, Eric Parsons, it's under his record label, Diamond Life Music Group, and I am signed to them. So, uh, I, uh, of course, I had to do a verse on there, and I did it with another homie from Bar and Block, T. Nutty. And I have to say, T. Nutty, I've heard of him, man. He is another phenomenal artist as well. Yes, he did the hook. It was called uh, Used to Sling Dope, and we were at the, la- we're the very last song, number 26 on uh, Capital Punishment. And also, on March 22nd, 2020, you actually released Really Sick With It, uh, that you actually did with uh, the nephew of Brother Lin Chung, Little Sick X, which I have to say, he's been on the radio station, another phenomenal, phenomenal talent individual. But I have to ask you, how did you and Little Sick X, Sick X meet? Well, me and Little Sticks were in the same, uh, we're under the same music label. So, so, so that's how me and the little homie got to meet. But Little Six is very talented, just like his father. Uh, I think he's one of like the next best things up right now. So it was an honor to be able to uh, drop a few bars of heat with each other because we was playing, we was bringing some flame on that. Oh, most definitely. He, I think he just recently dropped a new record as well, man. I'm telling you, he works like a madman, but he has massive talent. Yeah, if you guys haven't checked it out, man, go check out Little Six. He goes hard in the paint. If you guys want, like, that Sacramento hardcore in the paint, Little Six is just like his father, man. He brings nothing but heat. Sacramento stand up. And also, aside from the music tip of things, I also noticed you have your own clothing line available. I have to ask you, what type of clothes do you have? And, of course, where can our listeners actually snag some of your merch? Yeah, man, uh, I do all underground clothing. I really didn't go mainstream with it because I want to stay underground. Like, all like all business owned is myself. You feel me? I'm not cutting bread with nobody else. And uh, you guys can hit me up on Instagram, man. I do. I, I'm the vendor of the uh, hand-sewn sea rack hoodie jackets. You either do jackets or I do sweaters. We use a real bandana, not a print. So when you when you have put this hoodie jacket on or the jacket you put on when you fill it, it's a real bandana, just like the one out your pocket. And I also have to ask you, what is next for you? Is there anything I happen to miss during this interview? Um, anything else you anything else you'd like to promote? We still have you here live on the air with our live audience. No, you know, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm going to do, man. I'm taking it one day at a time. I'm starting to get older. I'm OG up here, man. So I'm just taking it one day at a time. And, you know, I I owe a lot of thanks to my wife, Kara, man. Uh, She's been like an angel on my shoulder, man. I was in a pen for a long time, and everybody gave up on me, man. And uh, the only one that never gave up on me was my wife. So I spent a lot of my time with her, and... If, if I'm not doing that, it's in the photo line or the rap game. If you always want to catch me doing something sick, just turn to my channel and I stay going out the mud in the photo line or the rap game, man. I'm always going to give you your money's worth. And also, Rocket, this is the time in the interview that I give a chance for the individual that slides into the radio station airwaves. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to. And if you can, drop them social media handles. That way, our listeners can stay up-to-date on your clothing, your music, and your movies, if they're not already doing so. Yes, I'm definitely going to let you guys know. I've, I've been I've been noticing on this Instagram, I've been having a lot of followers come over to me, man. So this clothing line and all these CDs that I'm putting out, it's really making my uh my name blow up, man. I got a lot of people at me every day trying to buy clothes, and the money's starting to turn really good. So praise God for that. 
So I have to say, Rocket, thank you again for taking the time out of your evening for coming on 97.7 at La Radio FM. It truthfully was an honor and most definitely a privilege, man. And I really hope down the line we can do this again. I'm looking forward to your new projects and most definitely your new movies when they do get released. Man, like I said, man, I really appreciate you reaching out to me. Like I said, man, it, it goes both ways. It's an honor to you as well to uh, bless me to be on your radio station. You feel me? Hey, man, I look at it as if you have that real hip-hop substance, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Because my, my mission with this radio station is to help keep real hip-hop and that real hip-hop substance alive. And, you know, you bring that to the table day in and day out, man. So, you know what I mean? If you have that raw hip-hop talent, I'm most definitely going to give you an opportunity. And I, I listened to your music, man, and it slapped, bro. I felt, I felt like a hand came out of my headphones and bitch slapped me. That was a slap. Hey, hey, you know what? I always tell people like this, man. You see a lot of weird people on the streets these days. It's not the way it used to be like in 94 and in the 80s, you know, and that's because a lot of real people are locked up and there's a lot of fake people out here, man. And yeah, a fake person can't breed a, breed, breed a real person. All they can breed is a fake person. So a lot of us real ones, we still out here, man, but we either locked up or gone or we on the sidelines observing everything and we don't like what we see. Yeah, like I, I don't know. There, excuse me, there's people out there nowadays, man, that's wearing like pink latex and fucking look like look it looks like a damn fucking a rainbow just busted a nut all over their face, man. I don't know. I, I can't. I can't even describe to you what they are, man. But I can tell you for one thing, it ain't fucking hip hop. Excuse my language, but it ain't hip hop, man. And no, I totally get you, man. This is not the same no more. It's like we're the we're the last of a dying breed, but. Like I said, you know, I've really lived this. I've been shot before, stabbed. I'm still here, man. I really lived this life. So, you know, I I'm going to tell it to you the best way I can, and that's sticking to the politics, and I'm going to give it to you black and white. That's I know no other way. You feel me? And one thing I do want to ask you, and, you know, if you want to, you can skip this question, but in, in my community, man, there is a lot of kids that, you know what I mean, try – Try to act like Bloods and Crips. I'm going to be honest with you. And they're white, they're crackers, but that, that that's besides the point. I, I was wondering, since we have, like, you know, a person that really lived the life right here live on the station, could, if any of these kids are listening, man, would you be able to describe to them why they shouldn't, you know, join gangs and stuff? Like, what, what are they getting themselves into when they actually do join a gang? Well, I can tell you like this, man. If you're if you're a real gang member, you're gonna there's gonna be a time in your life that you're so lonely in your life that you feel like you don't even exist. Because when you're a real gang member, not too many people want to stick around you because you're sticking to the script and they don't want to. So I always tell people that want to be in the gang. If you have a mom and father that care for you. Why would you want to be in a gang where you have a, where you take chances every day of losing your life? So everybody that knows me from Sacramento, I didn't have a mom and dad. I did not have a stable upcoming. I was always in the street running around, getting into stuff, being bad. So, you know, I happened to be on the side of town where the Crips was at, and they took me under their wings, and here's my story. But I, I, I preached to the young kids on the street, if you have a family, and people that love you, stay away from gangs because gangs are not cool. We are a product of our environment. Sometimes we do not have a choice. We have to do this. We don't have a choice. If you have a choice that you can say yeah or no to a gang, I would say no. Stay away from this. And I do want to say, man, just thanks for shedding light on that on that topic, man, because I'm noticing more and more of gang activity just being risen in my community, man, and I really want to shed light on that because there, there is some kids, man. If you were to look at these kids, you'd probably laugh and be like, "Come to California, you won't last a minute." But, hey, you, but know. you know why a lot of these people are like this, and these kids is because a lot of their father figures are locked up in prison, so they have no one to teach them to be a man. That is most definitely true. You know, so they, they a woman can't teach a man to be a man. She might teach you to show respect, but she can't teach you to be a man. So that's why a lot of these kids are growing up too fast and they're thinking that they know what's going on, but, you know, the streets move quick. So if you don't know what's coming around that corner, it could be fatal. And I do want to say, Rock, and look again, man, thank you for shedding light on that topic. But most of all, man, taking the time and coming on the radio station. Like I said, I'm a fan of your music. I'm a fan of your craft. Keep making it, brother, and I'm going to keep spinning it. Thank you so much for coming on 97.7 Outlaw Radio FM.
Hey, man, I thank you guys for giving me the honor and the pleasure, man. You guys be safe out there, and God bless you guys. Most definitely. You be safe as well. God bless, brother. All right now.